Hello, my name is Ian McCall and this is a video in on the Demoscopy Made Simple series on solar lentigos. Now, in Australia, solar lentigos are awfully common. We get a lot of sun damage and they can vary in colour from light brown to dark brown almost to black. And because they're so common, they're often seen in association with other lesions. However, Let's look at some simple solar lentangles. Generally, they're a flat, uniformly pigmented lesion on the face or other sun-exposed areas. There's an increase of melanin in keratinocytes. So there's increased melanin put out from the melanocytes into the keratinocytes in the epidermis. But there's also an increased number of benign melanocytes along the basal layer of the epidermis. So there's an increased number of melanocytes and increased melanin in the keratinocytes. Now, most of these lesions will get shaved biopsied if there's a darker area of pigmentation within a, uh, a lesion, and especially in the face where lenticular maligna is your uh, differential diagnosis. So that's the big one that you're really trying to exclude. Uh, when you're looking at a pigmented lesion in the face. Is it a solar lentigo or is it a lentigo maligna? The more variation in colour there is in the lesion clinically, the more likely it is to be a lentigo maligna. Let's have a look at some of these. Now, this was a lesion here. It was on a person's back. Note the irregular edge to this. A little bit of more pigmented in this area here. You've got this background of pigmentation. Then when you look with a dermatoscope, it's basically lines reticula. Again, see the irregular edge. Um, I've highlighted the very irregular part there. Now, it was biopsied because of this darker area. You could argue, though, that it's lines reticula, so it's one pattern, one color with thin brown lines. This bit is, anyway. So that's all solar lentigo. And in this, when this was examined histologically, this was just solar lentigo as well. So on the back, a bit of variation like this is uh, not uncommon. One colour, one pattern, benign. Then we come now to an area on the face, and this is where it becomes more difficult. Look at this amount of sun damage in this chap's face, and look at this lesion here. There's this bit, and there's this bit out here too. Um, and it was this bit that caught the eye because it was darker than the rest. And when you put the dermatoscope on it, you've got these areas of darker perifollicular pigmentation here. Now, these circular hypopigmented follicular openings in the face, that's what gives the pseudo-network appearance. On the face, the epidermis tends to be thinned and you don't have the contrast between the reti pegs, uh, the reti ridges and the dermal pegs. Um, but you do have the hair follicle openings. And early lentigo maligna, of course, gives you pigmentation around these follicular openings. And that was the concern in this. This was shaved, but again, it was a uh, simple solar lentigo. There was an increase in the number of melanocytes, but the melanocytes themselves weren't atypical. And there was no extension down the hair follicles. If you get extension of abnormal cells down the hair follicles, that's really one of the things you look for for a lentigo maligna. So this was the pseudo network in the face, and this was the bit that was biopsy, shave biopsy to exclude a lentigo maligna. Don't punch these, take the whole thing with a shave or do an excisional biopsy of that. Let's have a look at the next one. Solar lentangles, typically in other areas, actually have lines curved. Um, that tends to be the picture that you in fact see with them in other areas. Lines curved are a particular feature of solar lentangles or an early evolving um, uh, seborrheic keratosis, flat set king. Now I've said uh, one pattern greater than one color equals suspicious. Mm. In retrospect, looking at that, I don't know that I'd say that was greater than one colour. I don't think there are any, any great clues to melanoma there, but this was uh, biopsied, but it was just uh, a solar lentigo. Then you've got, say, this lesion here. Back of the hand, 
darker area here, you know, other lighter uh, areas of uh, fairly typical solar lint tango. Uh, adjacent to this one, you have this pink area. And it was the pink area and the combination of the dark area next to it that really would attack your attention. You'd wonder if you've got a melanoma and some amelanotic area here. But when you look with your dermatoscope, sure, you've got a darker area here, irregular edges, um, scalloped edges, I've said there. I've said brown circles, but it's really lines reticular. When they're, uh, when they're joined up like that, it's best described as lines reticular. Some obliteration of the follicles here, but then if you look at the bit next to it, you've got these white circles, and if you see how there's almost four little dots within that, like a four-leaf clover. Well, I know we're not supposed to use these metaphorical terms and Kitlerian uh, terminology, but it, it is what it looks like. These are sometimes known as rosettes in the openings of hair follicles. And white circles like this, with a pinkish background, are uh, a, a, a dermatoscopic features of uh, actinic or solar uh, keratosis. So this was a combination of a solar lentigo and an adjacent actinic keratosis. And this is what it looked like. Lastly, let's have a little look at the histology here. We've said that there's usually a linear increase in the number of, uh, so it's a linear distribution of melanocytes, a slight increase in the number, increased melanin production going into the uh, overlying keratinocytes. And there's often some budding of the epidermis with accentuation of the pigmentation at the base of these buds. Again, a term I shouldn't use, but dirty feet um, is described to this. And uh, this is what the dirty feet look like. Sometimes you can have little skip areas as well. And this is a feature also of ink spot lentangles, but we'll come to these a little bit later. So this is the uh, histological feature that you'll see with a solar lentigo, increase in melanocytes along the basal there, but just a slight increase, increase in melanin production, increased melanin going into the keratinocytes, a little bit of budding, and some in accentuation of, per of pigmentation at the base of these buds. So, solar lentigos, we're going to see an awful lot of them on the face. You're basically just trying to um, uh, exclude a lentigo maligna. And it might not be a bad idea if, after viewing this one, you pop down and uh, view the section down here on Lentigo Maligna, just for comparison. Thank you very much.